English broken businesses. We are all about black excellence, bringing local entrepreneurs together to inspire and motivate you through business. So it's simple, what you can do is to listen to this story and be inspired and show to you guys, nothing is impossible. If they can do it, so not as an abandon Basekai. Sit down and chill and listen to this wonderful story. Follow your dreams. I mean, everyone can run a marathon. Sure. You can run a marathon, but you're not an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You get me? Yeah, I get so you. So I have a brand, but I'm not a one maker. Mm -hmm. So exactly. It's English Broken Business once again, Bekeli Beke, Ivigi Nevigi. Every Thursday night, we bring you nothing but mouth-watering stories from us. English Broken Business is here to inspire, to motivate, and to educate. It's possible for a black person to make it. Before I can even start the interview or bringing this person, our guest, um, who's going to introduce himself. Guys, Jeng and Joyelo, don't forget to click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and also do share our videos on your TikTok, on your Instagram, on your Reels, on Facebook. Let us grow the community. Thank you for it. I have here Udalas, Ulinda, ne? Lindi, le. Shapunjan Priam. Umnandi for it. 100%. We've been looking for you. Okay. Yeah, no, we've been looking for you. You're one of the people that they were in our wish list. But you were very hectic, you were very busy. And thanks so much for inviting us to your space, Brian. Yeah, Finally, sure. it's, it's happening. Yes. So where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Even the weather, it's beautiful. Yeah. Brian, we're not going to have an interview with you. We just want to chat. Okay. We just want to have a chat with you. Before we can go to your business. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, guys, like, you know, that it took this long. You know, yeah. To actually, tie me in the chair. Sure. Uh, I mean, like, the, the past, like, years have been really hectic for me. You know? Sure. Um, yeah, actually, I've started to go full time on my business now. Okay. So I've got enough time to actually, like, you know, accommodate everyone. Sure, sure. So, yeah, I'm highly on my end as well. Like, it's okay. Yeah. We take that. We understand, bro. Exactly. We understand. Yeah. Sure. And so, yeah, I mean, like, you know, um, we're going to guys in the Ulindi Lenzaba. He found the Kalicha's finest wines. Um, the Kulela Pe Kalicha. Sure. I'm born and bred up. Um, I'm, like, 36 years old, Mobu. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I was born in 1986, okay, and like I grow like up in Lini with my siblings, like Bonnie and with my mom, sure. So I was raised by a single mom, okay, and like I grew up with my two brothers and my two sisters, sure. And yeah, I'm just like a regular, like you know, like township or like, oh, like exactly, <laughs> yeah. and like growing up in Lokshini, um, like I went to school around here, yeah, like in Jomo, uh, sure, just like in the next section, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's when I, that's where I did my standard eight to standard five, and like I went to Masile, okay, uh, high school, from sure, my, from my high school, still around like Hailij, still around a bit like Hailij, okay, yes, yeah, um, but yeah, man, like I'm just like. Uh, you know, one of those guys who did, just didn't do well in school. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't have any regrets with that. Because sure. We, we are all born differently. Differently. Exactly. Know, different mindsets. Sure. And, yeah. Sure. So now tell me about your family setup. Now that you were saying Uti, you were raised by a single mother, yes. a single parent, dang it. So. Uh, how was that family set up? Like, how many were you? Like, ha, huh, yeah. Did you have other siblings? Are you the only one? Yeah, my bro. Like, I mean, I, I, I had, I had other siblings growing up, you know. And I was the youngest one. I'm the last born here. Oh, and the like, spoiled bread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had this bread. <laughs> sure. Uh, but that's not the case with me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um. So like, yeah. My mom had me. She was 50 years, I mean, like, Jeez. so young. Yeah, she was very old. Yeah. And, like, I, I, I'm just like uh, the boy that happened. Sure, sure. <laughs> You're a special child. A special child. Yeah, yes. at, at that age, especially. Yes, yeah. Sure. So, you had other siblings, your older siblings? Yes, like, so I had my two brothers. Oh, okay. Uh, like, I had, like, um, yeah, I, I had two brothers. Sure. And two sisters. Okay. Uh, but like my mom passed, uh, oh. my two sisters passed, my Jeez. one brother passed, so Yo, I only left bro. with my brother now. Yo. Yeah. 
it's it's been hectic. That's been tough. Yeah, it's been hectic. I can I can imagine, and um, it's it's a very sensitive thing that you are touching because I'm also from that background where I lost both parents. So yeah. now you you have to man up at the end of the day. Yeah. You understand? But and for me, bro, like to be honest, like um, you know, because like I was born like in this home that like had older people. Oh, um, so sure. They also had like their children, so. You know, I had to man up and sort of like at the early learn age how to be independent at the early age. Yeah, because, like, yeah. You know, my mom like was no longer looking after me now; mm. I was looking after my brothers and sure. my sisters' kids. Sure. So I was like really, you know, like sort of had that solid, you know, independency. In, sure. In, in, in me like when i was still young you know? at the early age at the early age yeah wow wow okay so now that um i believe was the daily scale you did finish your high school grades and then what happened now Mokota is scale your parents are not there your brothers are not there your two sisters what happens now so like when i finished when i finished i never finished actually oh <laughs> yeah, like um so i mean the thing is like me um yeah, I mean, I was very distracted as like as a, as a, as a teenager. As a teenager, and, like, okay. I really struggled at school. Sure. So I never passed my matric. Oh, okay. And like after like not passing my matric, um, I was sitting home, you know, just like doing nothing. Nothing like, like, like us, see. Like us, yeah, exactly, around. yeah sure. wasting time, you know. And, sure. Yeah, like. So um, yeah, like that's when like you know I got a lot of pressure. My mom was still around then. Mm. And, I like, got a lot of pressure from her, like, you know, kicking me, saying that I must go hustle, find a job, start to be a man in a house, you know, sure. try to provide, help her out. And I felt it, you know, because I, I just recently came from the bush then. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I need to... Singing in the water anyway. Yeah, exactly. Sure. I need to man up and go out and, and, and look for uh, for a job, you know, so that I can provide, like, you know. Wow. Home. So you started working at what age? Um... How old I was? Was I? Um, bro. Jesus, <laughs> I can't remember the name. It's been but long. Huh? It's been long, yeah. But yeah. it was 2009. Oh, okay. Yeah, 2009, that's when I started to work. Yeah. But obviously, we're still in your teens when you yes. started working. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now, most partner, obviously, old lady, she's still alive at the time. Yeah, she's still alive. So yeah. you, you're getting that salary or the wages and then. You come assist blindly. Exactly. Yes, yeah. You can feel that you yeah. know I'm a man now. Exactly. Because sure. like I mean, my, our background is not coming from those like entitled or, or rich families. Yes. They raised in poverty, so I know what I had to do. Exactly. Sure. My, everything that I, I, I everything that I was working for, I need, I know that I needed to come back home and help out. You know, in the situation that we were living in. Sure. Yeah. So, but then now we, we know Guti Ikasi is full of pressure, especially we talk about Ikailicha, you know, there's a lot of influence. Uh, when you say that you were kind of like under pressure and you did get influence, what kind of influence were you involved in any gangsterism, were you involved in any shenanigans, maybe Zenzagala, like uh, Sintes is wrong that maybe you did. I know that you're not proud of those things, but were you maybe some somehow, someday, sometime in for Well, yeah, as as out, you know, like going to Roshini, you get exposed to these things, you know. And and when you're a teenager, like you know, you're not longer like being decided by your parents. Sure. Um not by yourself. Sure. And like you get like influence from friends now. Mm -hmm. So whatever you decide on doing is not long about you or your family. Sure. It's, it's, you want to please friends and, sure. stuff and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I was exposed to to negative stuff. Mm. Um, I mean, that's why like I was like not attending school sometimes. Mm. You know, like, started um, banking scale, banking, scale, banking, scale yeah, and yeah, sure. Exactly, yeah, because like, you know, you had to go and have a nice time, a and stuff like that, yeah. But I mean, luckily, you know, I came right out of all those negative things, you know. Nice, yeah. nice. So uh, I'm going to touch on a very sensitive issue. How did the passing of your your your, your mom and your siblings, uh, uh, um, maybe here Patanjani, here affect Tanjani, the passing of those um, people? Honestly, bro, like I mean, like uh, over far, like I'm telling you, yeah. you know, and like when like uh, my sister passed, 
it was hurtful, man. You know, it was not easy to see her suffer like that, you know. Mm. And especially, you know, someone who loved you, who cared for you, you know, and then like, you know, they leave you like now in this world, you know. Sure. And these people like promised to be around for you, you know, mm. stuff like that. Mm. It was not easy uh, feeling. Sure. Yeah, it took me time to actually get used to it. Yeah. And my brother passed, I was hurt. <laughs> mm. And like, yeah, like when my mom passed, because like, firstly my sister passed and then my brother passed, my two sisters passed. Mm. Uh, sorry, my 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 sister passed, and then my my father, my mother passed. Sure. And my sister passed. Sure. Yeah, the most hurtful one was my mother, you know, because like, um, you know, I, I watched her like through all the all, all the process, you know, like I would, I would, I was there, I was here living with her. Wow. Uh, this is her house, and like you know, it was safe for me to come back home, like after a long shift, mm. um, having to come home, like she's got high blood pressure. Mm. She's being attacked by stroke, you know. Sure. I mean, I'm coming from a long shift, and sure. I have to make a plan now to take her to hospital. Like, mm. you know, mm. it mm. was really uh, mentally exhausting because uh, I, I mean, I, I, I sure. had to look after her. Sure. And like, I was hoping, like, I was seeing her like becoming better and better and better and better. Mm. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, you know, she was gone, you know. Sure. And like you know, that's when it it hit me, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I was I was strong. I mean, like you know, I mean, we spoke a lot. I, she was expecting everything that happened to her, mm. and like I mean, she was old as well. Like, yeah. As I said, like she had me. She was fifty. At the age of me. fifty. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, like um, for me as a person, you know, it only made me stronger as a person. Yeah. You know. Sure. I sure. didn't dwell on the on the sadness of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And maybe now corner by the time the Tunkulunkule Sem Tata she 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 saw the things that you've achieved, the men that you yeah. have become. Yes. So definitely she was smiling, which this think, is what I wanted. Yeah, I think like you know the well, that's one thing like um you know <laughs> that makes me more happy about my mom because sure. she was so happy when uh, when I had my son, because she, wow. she she met she met my son. You know? Oh, your first born. My first born. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. So like she was so happy. I've yeah. never seen her that happy. You know, like it, it felt like it was, it was one thing she where she, she, wanted. she wanted. Yeah, would you, like, God before you take me. Yes, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, bro, like, honestly, sure. Like, Wow, wow. Yeah, I know I can see you've got smiles all over your yeah, yeah, yeah. your face, Umukulumangai. So I can I can relate on that. You know, uh to our viewers who are watching us, um the reason why I, I ask about the passing of his mom or the passing of his uh, siblings is because there's people out there in Apanje who are having an excuse that I lost my dad, I lost my mom, I lost my sisters, I lost my brothers. And this is the reason why today I'm taking drugs. This is the reason why today I'm drinking. This is the reason, you know, they they, they, they dealing with the pain and making a dr drugs an excuse, making alcohol an excuse, you know. We've, we've been through a lot. We've also lost parents. We've also lost our loved ones. But we had to soldier on. We had to stand up. Maybe you are also watching us and you've just recently lost your parent and you can't deal with it. The only way to deal with it is just to focus and soldier up. You know, it's make not the end of the world. it's not the end of the world. And like, do things that will make your mom proud. Because wherever they are, they're watching over us. Exactly. You understand? So make things that even if your mom had to come, your mom will be smiling and she will be happy to say, my son, you've men up, yes. you know? Yes. So now I need to know, Praya Muguti, after the passing of your mom, okay, you dealt with it. Obviously, it took some time and you can never, ever be 100%, you understand? Because these are people that are close to our hearts. Now you are working, right? You were working at the time she yeah, passed. Yeah, I was full time. Full time. Full time working. Like, okay. I was working a night shift then. But the Spanish singer and this was what type? It was a restaurant. Oh, oh, okay. It was, it was a restaurant, like it was more like a beer salon. It was a, it was a, um, a craft beer, like uh, a shrine for this brand, you know, that was being introduced in South Africa. But it was, in, I was in hospitality. Oh, I've okay. Been in hospitality. Okay, okay. So only Panbu's tune had to yes. do with the hospitality. The hospitality yes, sure. Yes. Okay. So is it, is it where the love of this business, the love of wine, started because uh, hospitality, you are exposed to drinks, wines, champagne, alcohol, beverages. Yeah. 
So, I mean, the story like uh, goes back as well. I mean, it's all linked up like with the pressure that I got like from from my mom. Sure. You know, like so my mom like you know would put a lot of pressure like to me like saying like hey bro like you need to go man up you know go find a job. Sure. So like yeah I did I went out like you know just like a regular some like person going out to to go do job hunting print out print out CVs mm -hmm. and yeah like early you no know, mid uh, mid mid two thousand and nine. Sure. Um, I was just going out to town bro like you know okay. just knocking on doors you know and like you know trying to find something and then I was lucky I, I met this guy like you know who was about to open a restaurant and like they were like looking for individuals to actually they had individuals but i was just lucky that he said oh. like yeah, come. Yeah, like, yeah yeah okay and we've got like a, a two weeks training sure come see us you know and then like i started to attend this like uh a two week training course, short course yes, sure. yeah it was really interesting to me because it was hospitality uh, and like you know i don't have a, i didn't have a background for, for hospitality then sure never worked in the restaurant I uh, never know how to butcher like meat. I uh, sure. never know how to pour a wine, a, a, like a glass in a wine, yeah. in a wine glass, or make or, or put together a cocktail. Yeah, yeah. So 2009, like that was my entry to 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 the hospitality industry. Okay. Started to work for these guys. Sure. I uh, opened a restaurant. It was a beer salon, like a beer, like a craft beer like, sure. uh, um, business uh, restaurant. Like so, we did like had like food and and beer. Uh, like in the restaurant, so yeah. they were like a, they were, we had a kitchen, like uh, a bar. Yeah. You know, but where I started, like I started from from dishwashing, uh, because I didn't have any knowledge. Yeah, started about, from the bottom, eh? Yeah, from scrubbing, <laughs> like, like, floors. You know, like uh, cleaning the toilets. Are you for real? Yes. Yeah. yeah checking the bins out. A refuse room, bro. Like, sure. You refuse a refuse room. Cause I'm not a skill anyway. Not a skill. Sure, yeah, I'm not exactly. a skill. So you belong there. Exactly, bro. Yes, and like you know, I was just lucky that like I was working uh, with with the people, you know, the, the the managers and the and the and the and the owners. Sure. They they were looking to grow people, like mm. you know, so um, yeah. So that was not the end of like for me. Yeah. Because of my dedication and the way I was doing my job. Sure. The guys actually saw a potential in me, mm. saying like, you listen, you know, we want to try you somewhere. But sure. We need you to train someone. To do the job that you're doing now, exactly to clean the, the toilets. Way you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> we are happy with you. Sure, but like we need to get someone. Somebody, we, yeah. we have someone that we want you to teach, sure. and then you manage that person. Jeez. So that's when, like, I, I started uh, management, and like you know, I mean, I actually like saw myself guiding this person, checking this person, you know, and then like the, the guy was on his own now. Yeah, yeah. I was no longer needed there. Sure. And then like the guys were like, okay, um, do you know how to pack fridges? I'm like, no, I never. Okay. okay fridges like this and then sure. like you know i i gradually grew like that you sure know? Like, so i was packing fridges being good at, at fridges and then like uh the guys said to me they came back to me say like you remember the guy you were teaching the scholar yeah we're gonna get him someone to teach like for him to teach you help him okay teach person and then you teach that guy like packing fridges yeah him. and i was doing that bro, like from and then i was going like growing gradually like, yes exactly uh, to operating the till, being a barman, you know, yeah. going to the kitchen, like, uh, you know, like uh, cutting, cutting veggies for the chefs, sure. running the kitchen, you know, uh, like uh, running the floor, clearing, clearing plates. Sure. Uh, and like, you know, like in front of house and back of house, I went back to the back of house. Okay. And then like uh, I was doing administration, doing all the ordering. And then I ended up a sudden I was employing people now. So uh, I was that, uh, from mopping the floor. Yeah. Employing people. And, and, yeah. <laughs> So they would come to you like for with the background like me as well like you know sure as you were saying earlier on if you're out there you lost hope like it's not it's not the end of the world exactly because yeah. now what 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 surprises me or what sparks my mind would see from mopping floor now the managers and the owners would come to you and be like yo bro what do you think about this person like they would also want your second opinion. Babuze yes. what do you think about this yeah. person? What do you think about yeah. that person? Yeah, exactly. Like I mean the whole operations like now I was part of the operations, like you know, wow. I was running the whole like restaurant now. You know, we had like meetings every day and uh, you know that helped me grow in the wow. industry, you know, like um having to have a better understanding and understanding about the business. Sure. Ins and outs, you know. 
And then, like, obviously, like, you know, throughout the journey, yeah. uh, while I was working there in the restaurant, like, we had, like, other people that were employed in the restaurant. Okay. So we had wine sommeliers. You know what the wine sommelier is? I don't know, bro. It's basically like a wine steward. So it's someone who's taking care of the wines in the restaurant. Okay. So that person goes look for, uh, for, for products, like, for wine. Sure. Like for the restaurants, like, for the whole list. So he organized wine tastings. Uh, so oh. I, I, I worked closely with the, with the wine Somalia, like that was in house. Sure. Employed in house. At least Somalia. Yeah, Somalia. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Somalia, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, like, yeah, I worked, I worked, uh, I was exposed to the wine cars. Sure, while sure. working in that restaurant. So, and like, I was just like, you know, um, interested, like, the way they were showing the culture like you know they were you know the way they were eating the way they were talking about aromas you know mm. the way they were looking at the, the way they were touching the product the way they were connecting with the wine you know? sure and, like i was like this this does not exist where i'm coming from sure and yet i'm here with these like winemakers and wine sommeliers but like what about home you know? mm. Mm. and like you know as someone who started to grow love for wine and i, I went back home I was like, okay, cool, on a Sunday, like, you know, when I'm off, I'm like, I, I feel like a, like a glass of wine. Sure. Let me go to the local tavern and, and find a good bottle of wine. And, yeah, I went and then, like, uh, I was just not happy with what I found in the, in the market. You know? Oh, okay. And, like, I, 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 I got frustrated. I started to ask questions, uh, talking with my friends, how they were thinking about wine, you know, and how they were enjoying wine. The culture was not there. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Wine is a thing. And... The, all the local taverns, like they've got wine in their shops. Sure. But what about the culture? Appreciating the product, you know, mm. and drinking mindfully and being conscious about it. I mean, wine is a subject, it's very intimidating subject. Is so, it? Yeah. So, I mean, that's why, like, you see a lot of people going to the vineyards because they want to be part of the culture. So, oh. I was like, okay, cool. You know what? Let me create a bridge. Sure. To, to create a brand, you know, uh, for the township. Uh, that's gonna be much more premium. Okay. And because, like, uh, when I said earlier on, is uh, the wine that I found in the market was not. You were not happy about it. Because sure. uh, people were drinking it with coke to make it palatable. Oh, okay. But if I'm gonna make you an example, one of the big farms that sells, that's dominating the market now. Yeah. In the township. Sure. The wine they sell in here in the township is different to what they drink on their table. Jeez. When they're having dinner. So, I mean, I had to look at those things. I was like, okay, cool. This is not right. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, I wouldn't sell, like, any 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 product to, to my friends or to, to the community. That, I that way, no, like, wako, you can't even consume. Can't sure, those. I get you. So, I, like, I, get I was you. frustrated with mm. that, with those notions. Having yeah, to go yeah. home, going to work. I had those notions. I was like, it's like, it's like, like, like people are having leftovers. I can't condense this like properly, you know. Sure. And like you know, because of the connections that I've built, then like you know, working closely with wine sommeliers and and winemakers. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I decided like you know what, I, I love wine. I'm passionate about wine, and one day I'm gonna have my brand. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So now, Priam, I need you to tell me something. How old is this baby? So um. Yeah, like so. Catch uh, uh, wines. Um, I found it. It's like twenty eighteen. Oh, okay. So it's pretty, so pretty new. Um, <laughs> you can guess where the time went with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> COVID came, eh? COVID came. Oh, and a lot happened. And, and a lot happened. Sure. So, so yeah, I mean, it's still like a a, 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 a upcoming brand. Sure. Uh, I mean, it's it's out there, you know. I mean, because of the work that I've done to yeah. it, to put it out there, you know. So it's you're very there. aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your your marketing strategy. You are very aggressive because if 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 we check your social media, your Instagram, your Facebook, you are all over. You are everywhere. Sometimes you can even like meet people in town, in the streets, in the township, wearing these t-shirts. Yes. So you are very aggressive. Like I, I can say, most of the people, especially like Kailicha, they are already aware. Yeah. They already know the brand. Uh, what you are about and what you are pushing, and in Dengi Tanda, it's it's what you say now. Which it's it's not the wine that you are selling, but you are bringing a lifestyle. Ebantuin, you understand? So it's it's there should be conversations. 
Exactly. You understand? Like yeah. now we're having a chat. So we're supposed to be having ours as well, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, so, we will get there. Yeah. So you, 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 it's about that. It's, it's, it's about lifestyle. Actually, actually. Mm -hmm. This is what you're selling. You're not just selling a bottle of wine no. for people to get drunk. Yeah, exactly. No, mm. I mean, this is the thing. It's like, you know, I mean, like, you know, I mean, Okay, this is gonna be off, off like what we're talking about now. But sure. Let's linked together. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, like you know, when you drink. Yeah. And then you don't eat. Mm. You get angry. Sure. You know, so I mean, like that's not a mindful way of drinking. You mm. know? So if you're drinking, you should level it up with, with food. With food, yeah. sure. Exactly. So yeah, that's what I'm promoting is to actually create like, uh, like. A platform where everyone is welcome to to learn about wine. I mean, I'm not perfect myself. I'm still learning. You're about still learning, wine. yeah. It's still growing anyway, exactly, yeah. yeah. Sure. So that's what I'm pushing is to push a, a lifestyle more than drinking. Sure. So I would I would prefer people to drink less wine but drink good quality wine. And responsible. And responsible. Yeah, and responsible. So we are not promoting and all that. Drink responsible. Yeah. Like the doctor will always say, a glass of wine during supper wouldn't hurt, right? It's actually healthy to have wine. Am I right, sir? It is, yeah. Like, obviously, I mean, just alcohol as, it, as, as itself, like, you know, sure. I, mean, I think, like, there's a certain dose you to have yeah, yeah. Uh, a day, you know, just to help with your blood circulation, you know, and, and okay. so on, yeah. All right. So what are we having now? So um, we are having a blend, yeah? Okay, a blend. This is a blend. Okay, it's a blend. Yeah. Right. So this is an interesting blend. Sure. Um, so this blend. So I mean, okay, cool. Before I explain, uh, explain it. Um, I want to explain how I work. You know. Sure. Uh, because like I'm from Kailicha. Sure. Well, Africa, I see. Sure. The Ako vineyards, like this is the most confusing part from Kaban. Yeah. And if and if I'm not doing is that like, journey. We don't have vineyards in Lokshini, but you are owning a, a, a blend, wine. Yeah. So like you know. What I touched on earlier on is that like um, I work closely with wine sommeliers and, and winemakers. Sure. So the winemakers and the vineyards, I collaborate with them. Okay. They produce the wine. Sure. And then I sell it under my label. Whatever wine that you, you, you get under my label is only exclusively available for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like um, I buy wine like in liters, like you know, like five hundred liters sure. to to two thousand five hundred liters. Yeah. So basically, every the process is all done in the vineyard, and the guys will produce the wine, bottle it for me. Sure. And then I do some labeling at home, and then like I most of the labeling is done in the vineyard. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. So it's a collaborative project. You know? Sure. Yeah. Exactly. At the end of the day, like, what for me, I don't care, but it's always a Then you're going to have your own vineyard. Because <laughs> now it also strikes me like Mang Fia, which, okay, the guy, uh, he owns his wine brand. So does that mean that he owns also a farm, like he's got a vineyard, Lebo Master Lembosch? Yes. So now it, 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 it makes sense the way you are explaining that. It's a collaborating uh, uh, thing. Yeah. You've collaborated with the wine. Uh, uh, thing farmers exactly yeah a lot of people like you know they mistake me and say like i'm a wine maker oh but i'm not bro. i don't yeah. want to claim that yeah 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 yes i have a brand it's culture's finest wine yeah yeah you know and like i like to take myself as a marketing brand sure you know and like you know it's 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 it's, it's it it doesn't get clearer than that you know like i mean everyone can run a marathon sure you can run a marathon but you're not an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You get me? Yeah, I get so you. So I have a brand, but I'm not a winemaker. Mm -hmm. So exactly. But yeah, man, I collaborate with these cool winemakers. Like, you know, I've grown this, I've grown this like uh, relationships with them. And like it's ongoing now. And it's actually been like a really a great, and I feel privileged about this being like black. Sure. Know, and being working with a product, you know, that's white dominated. Sure. You know? so yeah, I know it fit. is, bro. Exactly. Yeah, it I mean, is, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it's never been easy. For for me, it's been easy because, like, I had, like, a relationship that I've built over the years. Over the years, sure. exactly. So, but I mean, like, just, like, as a 
as 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 a people of color, like you sure, know, you're not. It's not it's that not, easy it's not, it's anyway. Not exactly. yeah. yeah, yeah. I was making a, a joke the other day to, to to my friends, like sure. they are winemakers, all male winemakers. Oh, like, okay. Why are you guys like flossing about like you're a winemaker? <laughs> yeah. Do you know my mom was a brewer? Yeah. 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 And she was never flossing about yeah, exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. It's like, funny, like, you know, like, you know, I mean, if you think about it, um, in our culture, like, as a black people, like, you know, I mean, we as men, yeah, we know, we, I mean, I don't know, I've never seen a guy, like, brewing in Kumbuj. Nah, I don't know of any. It's mostly know. about the mom. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like, so, yeah. I mean, it's other way around in the one culture, like, so men, like, uh, but, like, it's nice to see, like, now, like, young uh, black winemakers coming into the industry. That's nice. And also bro. seeing more like independent brands like man coming coming into the industry, which means like you know, uh, the industry is changing. Yeah. And it's also welcoming. It's growing it's even. Growing, yeah, exactly. it's growing even. So like this, this is a blend. Okay. Now. All right. So this is a blend like it's got six components in it. All right. So and I mean like that, it's got six grapes in it. Sure. So as grapes like one of they are grown separately. Sure. Uh, but the interesting thing about this one maker I worked with here is like he's playful. He's not experimental. Okay. So his name is Leon Kutsi. Yeah. Uh, he's in Kalistorp, like from Poor Plus. Sure. Um, it's quite like a warm climate area. Yeah, yeah. But like with this wine, so he he sourced the wine grapes like from different regions like Swatland. Oh, okay. Elgin, Stellenbosch and gets the grapes in. Sure. So they are all like vinified separately. Um, I mean, they are grown separately and like they are barrel matured separately. Mm -hmm. uh, but meaning that like uh, barrel, you know the barrels. Yeah, 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 I know, yeah, I catch so, you. Like, when they, when, they, when, they, when you process the wine and then you finish filtering it, um, and then like uh, you 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 sort of like mature it in 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 a barrel, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's usually like a French oak cask. Sure. Which is a little bit smoky. Okay. So yeah, also what what it does then, like you know, everything is grown separately, and then like all the grapes like are barrel matured separately. Okay. So like we've got thirty percent Chenin Blanc. All right. Oh, this is a Chenin Blanc. There's a Chenin, but thirty percent only for it. Sure. Uh, there's ten percent Rosan. Okay. And there's thirty percent uh, uh, Chenin Blanc. There's ten percent uh, Grenache Blanc. There's ten percent Viognier. Mm. There's ten percent Verdello. Jeez. So all these grapes. Like, I don't think I'll remember these things you just mentioned. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like, this, yeah. <laughs> they play a huge play at the part to actually like bring this blend to its nice, balanced roundness. You know, like a nice mouth feel. You know. Mm. No, I, so, I can like even smell. It smells very nice. Yeah. It's yeah. It smells so clean. It's, now, yeah, yeah. It smells so nice. Can we just do a cheers, Brian? Cheers to success. With English Broken Business, success to you, my brother. Awesome. Success to your business. Um, we thank you for allowing us once again to come to your space, not only to your space, but to travel through your mind. Yeah. And before we close it, I just want to know, how has the people of La Ekailicha received it? Are you getting more clients? Are you getting more uh, um, uh, 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 uh people maybe in demand who want you to supply them how can maybe someone who's interested of your wines how can they get it is it it is <laughs> but i told you Jai, tell um, our people so bro like to to be honest like you know i mean but what was it received well well i mean as 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 i as, 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 as said earlier on is that like um it, when it, it, it's been received well, you okay. know, like I mean, like a lot of positivity about the okay. you know, people are celebrating. I mean, that's why I also named it Kylie Chas Sure. Was for me to actually sort of like win the market share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would say to say oh, now and but Kylie challenge. Sure. You know, people that like will will resonate with. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Uh, yeah, people have received it very well. Okay. Obviously, like there's been a lot of negativity as well, like people not understanding the logic behind yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on how I work. Yeah. <laughs> they will always like, be, oh, bro. They will always chances. be. They will always like, be. Buying products from shop right now. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's <laughs> branding a work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's that, you know, like a lot of people, like, you know, they, they don't understand what I'm doing. It's not their fault. And then I feel like it's my job to actually create a space to educate yeah, to educate you to know educate, so I'm the space here up in Lini, so I can yeah. host wine testings like people can come and talk to me about wine and explain it to them like in person and we talk about the product as well like you know, sure. we talk about the aromas and how the wine is tasting wow. and how it's done how can you do it yourself as well sure. you know sure yeah but it's it's been received like well but my main challenge at the moment is the price point oh okay yeah my product is not cheap oh okay so yeah it's not cheap and like you know it's difficult to compromise on the quality on, on the price because of I've the done, quality that you're bringing to your band doing it's easy to do that okay to get like cheap wine it's easy to do that but mm. like you know i'm just gonna be like like others like other so when you just want to stand out exactly yeah. go I big mean, or go home yeah like i mean it's yeah Scooping, and scooping. anyway, you know your scooping, clientele, scooping, man. Scooping, yeah. You know your clientele. Yeah. So what's your entry point? Like, your entry point in one of your uh, uh, wine bottles? Uh, it's 108. 108. Yeah, oh, 108, okay. Yeah. So these are how many liters? Uh, 750 mils. Oh, 750 mils. Yeah, 750. Okay, so you only have got 750 mils. Yes, for now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, you know, I've got huge players to grow the brand, but you know, it's always not easy sure. to doing everything from your pocket. Yeah, you know, I so. can imagine. But, um, you know, us as English broken business, we we believe in small things. We, we don't believe in huge things because nothing comes huge, nothing comes big. Yeah. Everything starts small. So we, we are rewriting the history. Yeah. You know, um, 10, 20 years, 30 years from now, if so be sapila, you know, we want a uh, 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 kids to learn about about you, which there was this guy who started his own wine from a Kailich, you understand? So uh, we're not doing this to trend, we're not doing this to get more following and more likes, but we, we are doing this to tell these beautiful stories of these giants, you know, of these icons. See, now we look at you as a giant. We look at you as an icon. You know, you can feel small, you can be small in your own corner, but as English broken business, we, we don't see you small. We see you as this great giant. And from here, my brother can say to you, continue soaring, continue growing. And more investors are going to come. You're going to build your place like you just already told us. Yeah, it's opening in December. In December, ne? Yeah. So we're going to also come as English Broken Business on the day of Elon Giaco. Yeah. And can we just uh, tell the people where can they find you if maybe they want to buy um, a bottle of wine? Okay, so like, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I do like personal deliveries. Like sure. Of one. Okay. Um, so I'm accessible like on Instagram. Sure. And I will go Facebook, uh, mm. Kylie Charles Finest Wines. Mm -hmm. Send me a DM there. Like, all my contacts are there. Like, my email is there. Whichever way you would love to communicate with me, I'm going to respond. Um, I do deliveries. Uh, like, we do deliveries globally. So, it's either like you are overseas or... Outside the province. Exactly. Like sure. Outside the province. You know, we courier it to you. Um, yeah, but the one is accessible. And yeah, actually, I would really appreciate the support. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do like gifting as well. If you gift, if you have a gift for someone, like, sure, you know, we can put it in a nice box. Oh, lovely. And then like yeah, we we prep it for you. Wow, yeah. wow, my brother. Once again, thank you so much, Buffett. Thank you as English Broken Business.